Henninga. I'm the Executive Director of ARPA Canada. And I'm here in Smithers, BC today with Dr. Margaret Somerville. Now, many of our readers will be familiar with Dr. Somerville. She's the professor of both law and medicine at McGill University. Dr. Somerville is one of Canada's leading experts on ethical matters pertaining to the intersection of law and science, and she's regularly published in Canada's mainstream media. Dr. Somerville, thanks very much for taking some time with us. Pleasure, Matt. Now, one of the, the issues of top concern to many of our viewers is abortion. Mm -hmm. And what we would like to ask you is, from your vantage point, with your expertise, is there any hope of changing the status quo in Canada? Well, our politicians are absolutely terrified of it. I call abortion the third rail of politics. And the third rail is the electric rail that runs between the railway tracks. You touch it, you're dead. And politically, I think they think abortion, you touch it, you're dead. And at the moment, they're, uh, the people who are concerned about the fact that we have no law on abortion are trying not to have to deal with it. I think that will change uh, because we know that the young people are much more concerned about abortion than their parents were. And I think that's partly because the scene on abortion has changed. You know, as uh, not so long ago as 1970, abortion was all, uh, or except for saving the life of the mother, it was completely banned in Canada. And we've gone from a complete ban to no limits at all. And um, I think that what we see often in, when that sort of thing happens is that you go to an extreme but then people start to move back. I think for the people who are worried about abortion and would like to see some law, uh, that there's a, what I regard as an unfortunate division in the pro-life movement in that some people won't accept anything at all except a complete ban on abortion. And you know, if that's your view, I can understand people feeling that, but that's just simply not going to be possible. And uh, my own view is that we need an incremental approach and that we, we take, try to find as many, the majority of people where they will say, and we know that this is true in Canada, that something around about 65% of Canadians think there should be some law and that 65% think that at the latest it should be that abortion is banned except for reasons of the life or serious threat to the health of the mother after 20 weeks. And so I think we should put our energy into trying to get that. I think the advantage of that as well is that if we could get that, then that will sensitise people to the idea that abortion is not just as one of my um, students who recently had an abortion sadly came and told me that the nurse told her this is just a nothing event you won't even remember it in two weeks and this young woman was having a mental breakdown over the fact that she'd had an abortion so um, I think it's a combination of trying to find some consensus as well from where we can start and then I think, as well, I think very importantly, we've got to have a focus on the unborn child that, we've, that has been uh, deliberately suppressed in order to make abortion seem a nothing event. So I think we've got to, and I think that that's what's happening with young people. They, with the new science, with ultrasound imaging, with the fact that you know that the baby has got a brain, that it's got a heartbeat, that it can feel pain, you know, the idea that you would actually be putting it in terrible pain while aborting it. They, they, they rightly, their moral intuitions and their emotions revolt at that. So I think, yes, I think there's a lot of hope. But if now, uh, one other question that, that we have for you is that in the past year, we've seen the uh, Quebec legislature and a number of courts openly challenging Canada's euthanasia law. Mm -hmm. Now, from your perspective, is this uh, an unstoppable train? I hope not. <laughs> I've spent 30 years trying to stop it, so uh, you know, it'll be quite a waste on my part if it is unstoppable. Um, what we know is that uh, you can't persuade people by telling them it's against my religion, so that's the first thing. It, it, this is, and, and actually, it's, it, although it is a religious issue for religious people, it's an extraordinarily important societal issue. And I think we have to uh, 
get people to look at it differently about what they're doing. Um, one of the questions that I ask people is, why now? Why suddenly now, after thousands of years of saying we don't kill each other, we don't execute people who are dying, why do we suddenly think it's a good idea? And I think when we start to investigate that and when we realize what it is that we are doing, that we're not doing a merciful act of clinical care as pro-euthanasia people like to tell you, we're going to have doctors killing people. And we can't have that. And interestingly, the biggest group who do not want euthanasia legalized are doctors. Worldwide, uh, somewhere around 75 to 80 percent of doctors say they would not engage in it. I think we have to look at that very powerful image of that person who's got a horrible disease where we can empathize with them and stand in their shoes and think, well, if that were me, maybe I'd want that too. And we have to look at what it really means on a wider scale if we implement this. And what I think would happen is, that, and we've, we're seeing this happen already in uh, the Netherlands and Belgium, where euthanasia, in the Netherlands, euthanasia has been de facto legal for nearly 40 years now, uh, that you get the idea that euthanasia is the norm. And when you've got an aging society, you've got increasingly expensive healthcare resources, and you've got younger people who feel that um, the burden being put on them by taxes and other requirements to support this, that they, you know, they don't want these people around. I think we're in very dangerous territory societally. And just recently, um, there was a referendum in Massachusetts about whether to legalize euthanasia. And all of the uh, information we were getting and from the polls was that this was going to pass. But there were some people who did a lot of work explaining to people how it would open up the way for elder abuse, what it would do to your society, what it would do to your hospitals. And uh, the, it was defeated by a very narrow margin, less than 1%, but it was defeated. And so I think that's a very hopeful sign. And I think it's extremely important that people don't just let this go, that they work at explaining to people that there are, you know, there are other things we can do to relieve suffering at the end of life. There's an enormous amount we can do now. And interestingly, there's just been a study done where people were offered, a, when they were diagnosed with a serious illness that was going to be terminal, they could choose whether they went immediately to palliative care or they went to, you know, the regular sort of high pressure care and then later on to palliative care. And the amazing thing was that the people who went to palliative care lived on average four months longer than the people who went to the ordinary care. So, you know, there's, there's good options in this area that we've got to promote. One of the problems in Canada is that less than 30% of the people who need palliative care get it. Less than 30%. And um, Dr. Harvey Max Chochinov, who's this wonderful psychiatrist in Manitoba who specializes in psychiatry of dying people, uh, he was able to show that when people are offered good palliative care, these were people who'd been saying they wanted euthanasia, they changed their minds about euthanasia. So it's pretty, pretty sad society if what we say, we won't care for you, but we'll kill you. And that's really what we're saying here. Now, if any of our viewers would be interested in more resources from Dr. Somerville, she has a, a number of books, The Ethical Canary and The uh, Ethical Imagination, uh, among others, and they're available... And there's one called Death Talk, too. ...on this exact topic. Yeah. They're available on Amazon and many other uh, booksellers. And if you're looking for some articles, you can find them on the ARPA Canada website. Uh, so, on behalf of myself and the uh, ARPA viewers, thank you very much for taking this time. Yes.